into the weekend. Um, this morning met with Tanner already this morning, so this is the first day since you know we left uh, Nashville that he feels really good and ready to throw again. So I thought we'd been delaying it and we were going to wait till he feels really good to start playing catch. So we'll got our first good report of feeling great this morning. So some of the rehab and all the hard work that he and Anthony have been doing, he'll play catch today. So you know it's it's one thing to feel a certain way; it's another thing to really. So you pick up that baseball and start throwing. So we'll throw today for the first time with Tanner and then reassess after this first uh, throwing event to see where he's at. I would say missing this much time between um, last Thursday up till today that he would be doubtful for this weekend versus Alabama. What's the, I guess, the, the message as you approach these last few weeks of the regular season? Yeah, I just you use the word reset with the ball club, and somebody says, how many times can you reset? You reset as many times as you possibly need to, <laughs> especially playing in the tough, toughest league in America. So, you know, we left here just a small two weeks ago, you know, winning with a walk-off win and a series victory against a really good ball club, and uh, now we're back at home. So uh, reset's good um, uh, after a tough weekend especially. We had five sweeps last week in SEC play, so it's that time of the year to where um, your, your feelings and a long year and battling, and you just have to continue. So we reset with that mindset of understanding we're back at home, and the guys need to know what they're playing for. We've kind of been at this point in time every single year. It, it comes into play for every team um, in the SEC. So. We're really no different spot that we've been in the past. What we're blessed with, and part of the reset, is we have eight games at home uh, to finish up. We've played arguably, or just about as many road games as any team in the Southeastern Conference. Uh, to have eight games at home at this time of the year, there's no doubt that the next two and a half weeks will define our season of where we're headed. So, uh, a couple other things to hang our hat on is you know being 12th in RPI when I wake up this morning out of 299 schools and having the fourth strength of schedule. So, you know, our challenges are here and we'll put them to the side, you know. So whatever we have as far as challenges with our rotation as we went through the year, other schools are going through some of the same things. It's given us an opportunity to throw five freshman pitchers and they've had a month now to really be thrown into the fire and on the road in the SEC and at home in the SEC to hopefully here in this stretch run that they've learned some things and can now that we've played 40 plus ball games, can really go in and try to do be, be good, you know, and really help us. Um, but I think strength of schedule, RPI, resetting again. Um, I think the biggest thing, my one deal with our players is for them to. Uh, uh, I'm gonna really care how they get on and off the field, how they carry themselves for every pitch. We're playing for so much here that. Um, I'm not looking for a what was me attitude. I'm looking for fighting for every single pitch that we can over this eight game stretch. And I think I've outlined that pretty clearly to the players. And I think they're ready for the challenge. You get to kick it off against your rival. Uh, that's always really neat. So every record, everything, um, the game don't care about the back of your uh, baseball card. You know, and we even have some guys that can really capable of swinging a bat. And I don't think you can keep them down all year long. Uh, but, you know, we got to make the lineup out. Me as a head coach of, you know, the players make the lineup out and not the back of your baseball card. And that has to be huge for us going down the stretch is no matter if somebody's met expectations or don't feel like they've lived up to expectations or hadn't matched the back of their baseball card, none of that matters. We have eight games at home, and that's where I want our focus to be. Uh, Tanner and sore shoulders at the – Yeah. And what will be your um... – Playing against pitching wise, starting pitching wise. Yeah, we'll go Jack Owen. So he's pitched in the last two weeks. We now feel like he's up to 60, 70 pitches maybe in a start. So we think he's ready for that after competing in the Ole Miss and Vanderbilt series. So again, you just hope this thing turns around. We'll go Jack Owen, we'll go Brooks Fuller, we'll go TBA. Uh, I think they'll go Finnerty and Love and TBA on the other side. So we'll see where we're at and what pitching's left after the first two games. I think it allows us to piggyback a little bit. I think a Elliot Anderson gets to fall behind uh, uh, Jack, or Richard Fitz gets to fall behind, but there's a couple of relievers that can fall behind these starters here. So we'll attack it as a two-game series and then see where we're at for, for game three. Um, but, you know, maybe in, in some positive way, maybe Jack being out for a while, maybe he gives us a good stretch run these three weeks and into postseason, hopefully. And as uh, soon as Tanner can get back, um, you know, hopefully he can. He's got a good fresh run to be strong the rest of the year. So, 
we're hoping we can get some offense going and these guys, these young pitchers can can really lock in and have learned a lot the last month and give us three good weeks and at least this, like I said, we're trying to make this an eight game season right now here at Plainsman Park and you know our fans, uh, I thought was a difference in that Ole Miss game uh, where we pulled it out there in extra innings and uh, hopefully we're in a frenzy and get some good weather and, and play good at home and I, I know our fans are going, if this team can figure out a way to to steady itself and um, find a way in the postseason. This is going to be a pretty good job by players and coaches of hanging in there through a lot of adversity. I, I'll be proud of them for that. and I know our fans get to be part of that, and that's what I'm excited about the next couple of weeks. Speaking of offense, do you sort of have to believe that eventually or at some point Will Holland, Stephen Williams, Edward Julian are going to hit the way people expect them to? Yeah, I'll never stop believing. You know, you get to, you get to be – if this thing don't turn out the way you want to, you know, the last two seasons were at the same point. We're at 13 wins going into the last weekend last year at home where we got was able to beat a you know LSU team there on the final day of regular season to get to 15. And we got two week, two weekends before we walk into the last uh, weekend. So after these eight games, of course, we got to go to LSU to finish up the regular season. So, um, you know, everything's right here at, at, at hand for us um, if we'll just – understand the importance it's just with us it's so many new people you know we don't have a guy we don't have a player graduating on Saturday I don't I can't remember that in my career not just coaching at Auburn but anywhere else so that's what I mean by the there's a positive that can come out of this if this group can hang in there uh, it, it'll be a pretty neat moment and there's always expectations when you get one when you get an extra inning game away from Omaha you can't avoid expectations, and that's a good thing. I'll never try to take expectations or lower them as a head coach. You raise them up, but at some point you get to reality and where you're at. And we've been here before. We're just we're here with a lot of new people, and if these new people can figure it out, uh, it'd be really neat. But we can be sad in July if it don't turn out the way we want to. You can't be sad in May when you're playing for something, when you have this strength of schedule, when you uh, have this RPI. And when you have ten wins, there's you know there's six, probably six teams in our league that would like to have ten wins right now in the Southeastern Conference. So um, I'm gonna believe in those guys till we get to the last pitch. I want to say that I believe in Edward Julian. He still almost has an RBI a game. Um, I, I believe in Stephen Williams because I've seen it before. I believe in Will Holland because he has not translated it to his defense, but. I have to have challenged them that you're going to hang in there. You're going to get on and off this field. You're going to look fresh. You're going to play hard because um, we all know they could do more. They know they could do more. But I will believe in their at-bats until we get to the last pitch of this season. That's my job is continue to believe in them. Um, so we had the bases loaded four times at Vanderbilt. We had first and second seven times. Uh, we did get some hits. Rankin Morley hit a big three-run home run, but we're down eight to one. The, these moments, whenever it happens, it can explode. And just as quick as you can get one way with young people, you can get going another way just as fast. And we're going to get one of those swings. And as soon as one of those swings comes, when it matters, um, you know, we could really, really build off that and really ignite from that. So I'm going to keep believing that that moment's right around the corner for our baseball team. I wanted to ask you one uh, about Casey. I haven't had a chance to talk to you since 